Hey everybody, Happy New Year. I hope that you had great holidays and I'm so excited to be back with more fun with flowers. So let's do that. Let's create some beautiful flowers that we can use in our houses and at home while we're all steer, still home doing all this fun stuff. So um, I went to the host of the house the other day and it was so great because, you know, all the Christmas stuff is gone and we've got spring flowers. So we've got beautiful hyacinth I picked up. We picked up some iris. We picked up some tulips. I got some amazing ranunculas. So we're going to make a few different flower arrangements and just have some fun with those and give you tips along the way because that's what we do here. So um, I hope that this finds you well and that you're safe and well starting off this new year. And so today we're going to make this little collection of vases. These are uh, actually a repurposed vase. My niece got these for me. She got it from Costco, I think. And she got three um, amaryllis in it from not this Christmas, but last Christmas. And so I had those three amaryllis in there. And it was so fun. I had it sitting in the kitchen. It was great. And these cylinders are actually glued into this wood tray. And so what I did was I cleaned it up afterwards so that I could use it for fresh flowers or even plants again, if I want to do that. Okay. And so today what we've done is we've filled it with cold water, ice cold water. And we have added our Chrysler Professional Glory. <laughs> Chrysler Professional 3, not Chrysler Professional Glory. That's this. <laughs> okay, this is our Chrysler Professional 3. The great part about this is that it is going to help these spring flowers because spring flowers grow faster and open up more than any other flower that we use. When we have a hyacinth, we get it in bud. When we get an iris, it's in bud. When it's tulip, it's in bud, and they grow, right? And so when they're growing, they need that extra food that's inside there, and Chrysler Professional 3 delivers that for them. Also, the little packets that you see sometimes, they also make bulb food packets that are specific to bulb flowers. So that's very important that you look for those too if you have bulb flowers that you're working with. Now, we know, Hyacinth, tulips, iris, but also daffodils, ranunculus come from a bulb or a quorum. We also have lilies, alstroemeria, calla lilies, all of those come from bulbs. And so they can really benefit from that extra food that's inside the, the bulb food products that we have. So that's important. But Chrysler Professional 3 works great. I know some of you have gotten them online. You can go to the Ubloom website in our store. There's a portal there so that you can order the uh, the Chrysler products. And you also can um, put in the, Ubloom, the word Ubloom for a free gift too. So there's that. All right. So um, I thought it would be fun for us to start with this today. I found these amazing hyacinth I said, at the wholesale house. And so we're going to be using those today. And they look like this. The cool part about them is that the bunches that I got, right? So look at that. They're mixed colors, right? And so those mixed colors are really beautiful. And it saved me the opportunity of having to buy different colors to go together. They were already mixed for me. So we've got um, peach colored ones, we've got hot pink, we've got light pink, we've got lavender, we've got purple, we've got dark pink. So lots of different options in here. And that's going to be great for our arrangement that we're going to create today. So we're going to be using these. I'm using, um, I have my purple knife from Swiss Army, but I also have my purple tools from Dram. I have my bypass cutter and my compact pruner. Um, Claudia didn't want all this is for you because you have the purple ones too. And I know that you love them. So purple for power, I think that and protection. All right. That's what we use the purple ones for. So um, we're going to use those today to create our arrangement. We're going to be using the highest. So we'll start with the highest. OK. In our spring arrangements. I love these a because they're going to be fragrant and they're going to give off a nice fragrance. We've got a little bundle just like this. And so what I'm going to do is I kind of know what size I want that to be inside there. And so I'm going to take this. And I'm just going to cut the whole bunch at one time and then drop it down in there. See, that's a little bit tall yet. Okay. And this is where I tell you, you're in charge of this situation. You're the one that's making this arrangement. So it has to please you first. And that's super important. Oh, there. I like that better. I don't you agree. Shorter, better. I like that. So we just we just put a whole bunch in there. 
I think actually I grabbed six. So I probably grabbed five and I should probably follow that again. So I have three more here and I'm going to grab three again. So that's going to be a total of six. Perfect. We're going to stack them up and line them up. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with my cut this time. So I don't have to cut twice. And we're going to drop it in the other end. So you're going to ask me, why did I go there and there? Because I can. You could go there and there and there. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. And let's see. We've got, oh, we got two more there. And I, so I need four. One more. Three. And one, two. <laughs> one. That's four, five, six. And you'll notice I'm picking up all of their foliage with them too. So I gathered all of those up in a bunch together, right? Because this should be easy and it should be fun, okay? So again, I'm just gonna cut this group all in one piece and I'm gonna drop it into the container, okay? Now look at how cute that is. Now these guys are going to get bigger. They're going to open up. They're going to have more room. Going to get bigger heads on them and everything. And it's going to be really wonderful. All right. And you know what? I have three extra here. One, two, three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one more into each little vase. Okay. And again, with their stems and their leaves, just to tighten it up a little bit more, okay? Because I'm using these hyacinth as my structure, okay? They're gonna be the structure in this vase. And it's gonna hold the other flowers that I'm gonna decide to use in here in place, all right? So look at how cute that is already. And I mean, isn't that a wonderful repurpose of another container? That's really fun. And I think it's great. Um, hyacinth have, very, very thick stems that are extremely juicy. Um, so there's a lot of moisture in them. And so my bypass cutter works really well to cut them because they are kind of fleshy. And I'm just cleaning up a little bit after myself. Okay, I'll put these over here for right now. So um, I love that we enjoy the process. That's one of the things that we talk about here on these live videos is that we're enjoying the process of arranging flowers because as we're doing this our body is relaxing our body is um, secreting endorphins we um it may be melatonin it may be dopamine and it allows us to relax a little bit and that's the best thing i think right now we all could use a little relaxing and i think that that's nice it's just a fun way for us to calm ourselves down and i like the ritual of creating a flower arrangement. We're going to talk a lot about rituals, I think, this year, because I've been doing some research. I'm doing a, a program for a client, and we're talking about emotional intelligence and how rituals help us be more present in the present time that we're in. And so this ritual of creating flowers is a really great example because as we're placing these beautiful flowers into these vases, we're creating something beautiful and we should be enjoying that process. I never want you to hurry up and do your flowers. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Let's do the flowers. We got to get the flowers done. That's not being effective for yourself and for your well-being. I want you to enjoy it. Just like we enjoy putting up our Christmas decorations or how we enjoy sitting and reading a book or making ourselves a cup of coffee. I have a ritual every morning about coffee, about making my coffee with my uh, Chemex. I love that. I love the process of making it. And so I always step back, even when I'm in a hurry, to enjoy it just a little bit more because we need to be present in that time that we're doing something that's wonderful and fun. So I want you to continue to do that, okay? So as we're working with this and creating our arrangements, I want you to be present when we do that. So um, I think we need to add a few tulips to this. And oh, look at these are gonna be perfect. I got three different colors of tulips the other day. Three different, or, well, I got five actually. So I got a purple, I got a yellow, and then I got variegated ones. This is a yellow variegated one. 
with red. I have another one that is more orange and yellow. And then I have another one that's white and pink and dark pink. Okay. So I just got different ones so that I could enjoy different ones. So we have inside this bunch, a bunch of tulips always has 10 stems. Um, when we get them commercially from a florist. Now, if we buy them at the grocery store, sometimes they have five stem bunches, you know, and so that's great too. And I always take them out of here. Now, you'll notice that I have the bag. I left the bag on them so that as they hydrated, they would straighten up. When I got these yesterday, they'd been laying in a box at the wholesaler. And so they were what we call dry pack, which means that they are in a box dry. They're not in water. It's the best way to ship tulips because you can ship them very tight and then very cold. And then, it, then as they mature, they start to grow. If they spend too much time in the box, they start to grow like this. And that's what the ones, what these were doing when I was processing them yesterday. Now, you know what is going to be interesting too for us, I think, is that um, I'm going to show you that in just a second. So um, we should do a ritual about processing flowers. And so we'll do that. We'll do that coming up in the future. I'll go get my flowers and we'll process them together. That would be fun because one of my favorite rituals is, of course, processing flowers. So when I take them out of this, I left them in the, in the cellophane wrapper and put them in this bucket so they would straighten up. And you can see back there that they're straight now. They're standing up straight. So that's important that I did that. Then when I take them out, I want to examine them. And look, here's an example. There's this little one here. And look, it, it's twisted and it's got some ooky nastiness on it. We got to make sure that we take care of that right away because that will spread to our other flowers. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that off. Okay. And now he's all ready to go. And look at, he's a, a single little flower. Okay. So you know what? And we have three of these. We have 10 stems. So three, three, three. I'm going to put him over here for another little project. We'll finish at the very end. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to cut them. I'm going to pull off that extra leaf and I'm gonna tuck it down inside here. Now, the thing about my tulips that I need to remember is that my tulips are going to get longer as they are in the water. They're phototropic, which means that they are going to get longer. Look at how cute that starts to look, right? Um, people always ask me what flowers go together. You know, I think all flowers go together. It's when we start to use ones that have tints or dyes on them where they don't necessarily sometimes go together because um, I think nature just makes sure that all flowers go together. So we've got red and yellow in here with our beautiful pink and purple. Look at how cute that is. And you're going to notice that over the next couple days, what's going to happen with this arrangement is they're going to grow towards the light. So depending upon where I place them, they're moved towards the light. And that's one of the things that I love about tulips is that they're phototropic nature. And I always say, don't ever try too hard with tulips because they're like the teenagers of the flower industry. They, um, of the flower world, the flower industry. Okay, too. But yeah, the flower world, tulips in the flower world. They, um, are the teenagers because they do exactly what they want to do whenever they want to do it. If those of you who have teenagers or have had teenagers know what I'm talking about. So now look at that. Look at how cute, how that's coming along. And the different hyacinth are going to open up inside here. Those tulips are going to open. They're going to close. That's the other thing too is sometimes people ask me about um, opening or closing tulips. Tulips are going to open and close. That's what they do. Um, you'll hear some old wives tales about cutting a slit or sticking a pin in below the bloom to make them not open. I have no idea why you would ever do that. It's just such bad behavior and so horrible and so mean to the flower. I want to see what the inside of these tulips look like, what colors they are, what the pollen looks like, what that center looks like. Many varieties open up and reveal a completely different color on the inside or a contrasting color of their pollen and stamen and anther on the inside. I want to see that and I want to appreciate it. So um, I want to be present for that opening of those flowers. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So now I think we need to add a few iris to this too, because that will just kind of complete it for us. So I'm going to grab, uh, let's see, let's grab about five of those iris maybe. Okay. Now 
just a little bit of instruction for you. This is what an iris should look like when we're buying it. Okay? It should be nice and tight. Look, at there's nothing there. You can barely see it, right? Okay? An iris like this is opening up already. It's already coming along. It's maybe got three or four days left. That's about it. Okay? So you want to make sure that you get those iris ni nice and tight when you're picking them out and getting them. So when you're looking at them at the grocery store or if you're looking at them at a professional florist and you see them and they're a little bit more open than this, you want tighter ones. That's important because we want those tight ones so we can appreciate what's going to happen over the next couple days. Oh, look, I had six. I had a total of six. So I can put two in each vase. Now, some people ask me about, you know, there's all that... Um, thing about, uh, you know, oh, professional floral design or garden club floral design and twos and fours and ones and three. Uh, I, I put in what I think looks nice. Okay. Um, if you're in a competition, you're going to be judged on that. So you need to be aware of that. But on this, no judging. Okay. We're not judging this. We're not judging your arrangement. You're going to create for your dining room table. And we just want it to please you. And we want it to be beautiful. See how pretty that is. I think I'm done right? I was thinking I was going to add some more stuff to that, but I think that that's just perfect. I was thinking about adding some of the, some of these, um, great little, uh, pom-poms, but I'm going to save them for another project, I think. Oh gosh. See, now that I brought it out here, I think I'm going to see my gut reaction at first was right. I should have listened to my gut reaction. Yeah. I use a couple of those. So here, I'm going to stick one up there. Because you know what that does? The thing I love about that chartreuse green coloration is that that chartreuse green makes the other colors in this arrangement bubble up. We call it acid green for that reason. Because it's going to make those other colors be more intense and make them be more exciting. All right. See how cute that looks now? I do like that in there. I'm glad that I went ahead and added that. Yeah, it just makes the colors more vibrant. And I think that that's fun. So now I've got some of these little pieces right here. I've got these little tiny uh, pom-poms left. I had my other little tulip from before. And look, I have... This is why I have little vases like this around the house, okay? Because I think they're always great. Um, when I was processing flowers the other day, when I was getting all these ready and everything, I had two roses that were broken, okay? Two yellow roses that were broken. And I've got that tulip. And what else? I'm going to grab this. Little bag. I'm going to grab a little piece of hypericum too, okay? And so little vases like this are just lovely. I love them. And so I'm going to cut that guy just a little bit shorter because this is what happens to those little extra pieces and parts you have left when you're arranging. We certainly don't want to throw them away. Um, we joke, I, I joke about it. When we, when we had our flower shop, my dad, we would have little vases like this on the table. And um, if any of you have ever gotten my thousand and one idea book, um, the last entry in the thousand and one idea book is about Mrs. Kingsley's garden. And Mrs. Kingsley was a lady that a friend of mine worked for. And at Mrs. Kingsley's, Mrs. Kingsley's gardens, they would take little vases like this. Actually, they would take, um, the tops of design master, uh, spray, spray cans, the little tops. And in the, those little tops, they would put all the extra little flowers that they had that were broken off or got trimmed off or whatever throughout the day. And at the end of the day, they would give them to a lucky person who came in to the flower shop, somebody who needed a few little flowers or something like that, needed to feel a little bit better. They would, they would give them one of Mrs. Kingsley's arrangements. And so I think that that's really neat that just that what was left over. And one of the rules about Mrs. Kingsley's gardens were that you couldn't buy them. 
Um, you couldn't buy them, you had to be gifted them. And so that was a really cool concept. So in our store, we had those, we did the same thing, but we would put ours back in the cooler so that we could throw them away a week later. I don't really know why we didn't give them to anybody. That was something silly. We, we should have given them to other people. That would have been great. Um, let's see. I have, I want to put one more, I want to put a hyacinth in there. Because I think it needs a little bit of pink. See, look how cute that is. And I'm actually going to put this in the office bathroom. Because we have a bathroom right back there for the office. So I'm going to put that in there so that when everybody's in the bathroom, they can see flowers. Everybody, me and Kelly and the dogs. Okay. But yeah, so um, yeah, I think that that's good. That we should have, I like to have flowers all throughout the house. So um, we love this. Now, obviously these spring flowers are going to open quickly. Okay, that's one of the things that they do is that they open faster than others. And so one of the things that we can do is we can mist it with our Chrysler Professional Glory. And so what that's gonna do is we're just giving it a nice coat that's gonna help seal the molecular structure of the flowers and it's going to make them last about 24% longer. So if these guys were going to last four days, we'll get five days out of them. If they were going to last, you know, eight days, we're going to get 10 days out of them. Okay. So 25%, that's a lot. Okay. And that's what this little product does for us when we do that. So just putting, spraying that over the top of that, misting it, it seals the molecular structure so it can't evaporate water off its face. So fun little project, a little cleanup project for us at the same time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you make an arrangement with spring flowers, send it to me. Send it to me at j at ubloom.com, the letter j at u-b-l-o-o-m.com. And we can do that. And then also if you, um, and or if you want to post it on the J. Schwanke's Life in Bloom page on Facebook or the U Bloom page on Facebook, please do it there. We'd love to see it. I'd love to see what you're making at home because that's one of my favorite things too. So um, remember too, you're here at YouTube. So if you've not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel or uh, click on the bell to make sure you get notifications every time we post a new one of these videos. So, all right. I look forward to seeing you next time. Remember, we always have a video on Thursdays that I host in live chat on, um, on YouTube. And typically with ones like this too, hopefully I'm live chatting right over there right now. And you can ask your questions to me too, if you want to. So, all right. Thanks and have a great day. I hope it includes flowers.